The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Two Chronicles chapter 9 When the Queen of Sheba heard of Solomon's fame, she came to Jerusalem to test him with hard questions. Arriving with a very great caravan, with camels carrying spices, large quantities of gold and precious stones, she came to Solomon and talked with him about all she had on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for him to explain to her. When the Queen of Sheba saw the wisdom of Solomon, as well as the palace he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, the attending servants in their robes, the cupbearers in their robes, and the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. She said to the king, The report I heard in my own country about your achievements and your wisdom is true, but I did not believe what they said until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half the greatness of your wisdom was told me. You have far exceeded the report I heard. How happy your people must be! How happy your officials, who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom! Praise be to the Lord your God, who has delighted in you and placed you on his throne as king to rule for the Lord your God. Because of the love of your God for Israel and his desire to uphold them forever, he has made you king over them to maintain justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold, large quantities of spices and precious stones. There had never been such spices as those the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. The servants of Hiram and the servants of Solomon brought gold from Ophir. They also brought algam wood and precious stones, the king used the algam wood to make steps for the temple of the Lord and for the royal palace, and to make harps and lyres for the musicians. Nothing like them had ever been seen in Judah. King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba all she desired and asked for. He gave her more than she had brought to him. Then she left and returned with her retinue to her own country. The weight of the gold that Solomon received yearly was 666 talents, not including the revenues brought in by merchants and traders. Also, all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the territories brought gold and silver to Solomon. King Solomon made 200 large shields of hammered gold. 600 shekels of hammered gold went into each shield. He also made 300 small shields of hammered gold, with 300 shekels of gold in each shield. The king put them in the palace of the forest of Lebanon. Then the king made a great throne covered with ivory and overlaid with pure gold. The throne had six steps, and a footstool of gold was attached to it. On both sides of the seat were armrests, with a lion standing beside each of them. Twelve lions stood on the six steps, one at either end of each step. Nothing like it had ever been made for any other kingdom. All King Solomon's goblets were gold, and all the household articles in the palace of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. Nothing was made of silver, because silver was considered of little value in Solomon's day. The king had a fleet of trading ships manned by Hiram servants. Once every three years it returned, carrying gold, silver and ivory, and apes and baboons. King Solomon was greater in riches and wisdom than all the other kings of the earth. All the kings of the earth sought audience with Solomon to hear the wisdom God had put in his heart. Year after year, everyone who came brought a gift, articles of silver and gold and robes, weapons and spices and horses and mules. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots and 12,000 horses, which are at cities, and also with him in Jerusalem. He ruled over all the kings from the river Euphrates to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Egypt. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones, and cedar 
as plentiful as sycamore fig trees in the foothills. Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from all other countries. As for the other events of Solomon's reign from beginning to end, are they not written in the records of Nathan the prophet, in the prophecy of Ahijah the Shilonite, and in the visions of Ido the seer concerning Jeroboam son of Nebat? Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel for forty years. Then he rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son succeeded him as king. 2 Chronicles chapter 10 Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had gone there to make him king. When Jeroboam son of Nebat heard this, he was in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon. He returned from Egypt. So they sent for Jeroboam. And he and all Israel went to Rehoboam and said to him, Your father put a heavy yoke on us, but now lighten the harsh labor and the heavy yoke he put on us, and we will serve you. Rehoboam answered, Come back to me in three days. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who had served his father Solomon during his lifetime. How would you advise me to answer these people, he asked. They replied, If you will be kind to these people and please them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your servants. But Rehoboam rejected the advice the elders gave him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him and who were serving him. He asked them, What is your advice? How should we answer these people who say to me, Lighten the yoke your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him replied, The people have said to you, Your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make our yoke lighter. Now tell them, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. My father laid on you a heavy yoke. I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to Rehoboam, as the king had said, Come back to me in three days. The king answered them harshly, rejecting the advice of the elders. He followed the advice of the young men and said, My father made your yoke heavy. I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people. For this turn of events was from God, to fulfill the word that the Lord had spoken to Jeroboam son of Nebad through Ahijah the Shilonite. When all Israel saw that the king refused to listen to them, they answered the king, What share do we have in David? What part in Jesse's son? To your tents, Israel. Look after your own house, David. So all the Israelites went home. But as for the Israelites who were living in the towns of Judah, Rehoboam still ruled over them. King Rehoboam sent out Adoniram, who was in charge of forced labor. But the Israelites stoned him to death. King Rehoboam, however, managed to get into his chariot and escape to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. 2 Chronicles chapter 11 When Rehoboam arrived in Jerusalem, he mustered Judah and Benjamin, a hundred and eighty thousand able young men, to go to war against Israel and to regain the kingdom for Rehoboam. But this word of the Lord came to Shemaiah the man of God. Say to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, this is what the Lord says. Do not go up to fight against your fellow Israelites. Go home, every one of you, for this is my doing. So they obeyed the words of the Lord and turned back from marching against Jeroboam. Rehoboam lived in Jerusalem and built up towns for defense in Judah. Bethlehem, Etam, Tekoa, Bethzua, Soko, Adalam, Gath, Marisha, Ziph, Adoraim, Lachish, Azekah, Zorah, Ajalon, and Hebron. 
These were fortified cities in Judah and Benjamin. He strengthened their defenses and put commanders in them with supplies of food, olive oil, and wine. He put shields and spears in all the cities and made them very strong. So Judah and Benjamin were his. The priests and Levites from all their districts throughout Israel sided with him. The Levites even abandoned their pasture lands and property and came to Judah and Jerusalem because Jeroboam and his sons had rejected them as priests of the Lord when he appointed his own priests for the high places and for the goat and calf idols he had made. Those from every tribe of Israel who set their hearts on seeking the Lord, the God of Israel, followed the Levites to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. They strengthened the kingdom of Judah and supported Rehoboam, son of Solomon, for three years, following the ways of David and Solomon during this time. Rehoboam married Maalath, who was the daughter of David's son, Jerimoth, and Abihail, the daughter of Jesse's son, Eliab. She bore him sons, Jeush, Shemariah, and Zaham. Then he married Maacah, daughter of Absalom, who bore him Abijah, Atai, Ziza, and Shalomith. Rehoboam loved Maacah, daughter of Absalom, more than any of his other wives and concubines. In all, he had eighteen wives and sixty concubines, twenty-eight sons and sixty daughters. Rehoboam appointed Abijah, son of Maacah, as crown prince among his brothers, in order to make him king. He acted wisely, dispersing some of his sons throughout the districts of Judah and Benjamin and to all the fortified cities. He gave them abundant provisions and took many wives for them. 2 Chronicles chapter 12 After Rehoboam's position as king was established and he had become strong, he and all Israel with him abandoned the law of the Lord. Because they had been unfaithful to the Lord, Shishak, king of Egypt, attacked Jerusalem in the fifth year of King Rehoboam. With twelve hundred chariots and sixty thousand horsemen and the innumerable troops of Libyans, Succites and Cushites that came with him from Egypt, he captured the fortified cities of Judah and came as far as Jerusalem. Then the prophet Shemaiah came to Rehoboam and to the leaders of Judah who had assembled in Jerusalem for fear of Shishak, and he said to them, this is what the Lord says. You have abandoned me. Therefore, I now abandon you to Shishak. The leaders of Israel and the king humbled themselves and said, The Lord is just. When the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, this word of the Lord came to Shemaiah. Since they have humbled themselves, I will not destroy them, but will soon give them deliverance. My wrath will not be poured out on Jerusalem through Shishak. They will, however, become subject to him, so that they may learn the difference between serving me and serving the kings of other lands. When Shishak, king of Egypt, attacked Jerusalem, he carried off the treasures of the temple of the Lord and the treasures of the royal palace. He took everything, all shields that Solomon had made. So King Rehoboam made bronze shields to replace them and assigned these to the commanders of the guard on duty at the entrance to the royal palace. Whenever the king went to the Lord's temple, the guards went with him bearing the shields, and afterwards they returned them to the guard room. Because Rehoboam humbled himself, the Lord's anger turned from him, and he was not totally destroyed. Indeed, there was some good in Judah. King Rehoboam established himself firmly in Jerusalem and continued as king. He was forty-one years old when he became king, and he reigned for seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel in which to put his name. His mother's name was Naamah. She was an Ammonite. He did evil because he had not set his heart on seeking the Lord. As for the events of Rehoboam's reign from beginning to end, are they not written in the records of Shemaiah the prophet and of Iddo the seer that deal with the genealogies? There was continual warfare between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam rested with his ancestors, 
and was buried in the city of David. And Abijah, his son, succeeded him as king. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen.